The Bayraktar TB2, a type of Turkish drone that the Ukrainian military has been increasingly used against the Russian forces in recent days, is the hero of this video. Overnight, Bayraktar drones destroyed one tank and two surface-to-air missile systems. According to the Ukrainian military, Bayraktar drones, which have been in service with the military since at least 2021, are seen blowing up a Russian fuel convoy and a group of supply vehicles. Let's have a look at this drone. The Bayraktar TB2 is an unmanned combat aerial vehicle with a medium altitude and long endurance that may be commanded remotely or autonomously. Baiko Defense, a Turkish firm, produces it primarily for the Turkish armed forces. An air crew in a ground control station monitors and controls the aircraft, including weapon deployment. Selçuk Bayraktar, a former MIT graduate, is substantially responsible for the UAV's creation. While the Turkish armed forces define the Bayraktar TB2 as a tactical UAV class to distinguish it from the TAI Anka UAV, international standards identify it as a medium altitude long endurance UAV. The TB2 drone had logged 400,000 flight hours as of November 26, 2021. The Turkish military is the primary user of TB2 drones. However, an export model has been sold to a number of other countries as militaries. Turkey has deployed the drone frequently in Iraq and Syria against targets of the Kurdistan Workers' Party and the People's Protection Units. Azerbaijan employed Bayraktar drones in the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict in 2020, while Ukrainian soldiers utilized them during the Russian invasion of Ukraine in 2022. Previously, technology such as Rotax 912 engines and optoelectronics had to be imported and regulated. After learning of their military use despite being certified for civil use only, Bombardier Recreational Products, which owns Rotax, halted deliveries of their engines to specific countries in October 2020. The Canadian Foreign Ministry imposed export restrictions on Westcam in the same month. In response to global sales boycotts, the Turkish industry announced the availability of domestically built alternatives, including the TEI PD-170 engine, fuel valve and CATS FLIR system on November 6, 2020. Integration testing with the CATS FLIR system from Turkish business Aselsan began. Foreign companies cancelling shipments of components to Baikar did not pose a huge difficulty. According to Turkish defense industry researcher Kader Doğan, who added that as of January 2021, all of those components had been replaced with locally created counterparts. The Bayraktar TB2 platform features an inverse V-tail shape and a blended wing body design. The internal combustion engine located between the tail boom generates thrust. The monocoque platform is modular, with essential components like the wing, tail boom and V-tails detachable. The fuselage is mostly comprised of carbon fiber composite materials, with precision CNC machined aluminium pieces employed at the platform's connector sections. Fuel is stored in bladder tanks and solenoid valves automatically balance fuel use. A two-blade propeller with variable pitch enables for economical flying at middle altitudes. The ground control station is based on a NATO spec shelter with redundant command and control systems. Three people work in the mobile unit, the pilot, the payload operator and the mission commander. The GCS has redundant air conditioners as well as a filtration machine for nuclear, biological and chemical filtration. All of the shelter's hardware is stored in racked cabinets. The operator interface software and twin screens in front of each operator are utilized for real-time command, control and monitoring. Six aerial vehicle platforms, two ground control stations, three ground data terminals, two remote video terminals, and ground support equipment are all included in each TB2. A triply redundant avionics system is installed on each aerial platform. The cross-redundant architecture of its ground control system allows the pilot, payload operator, and mission commander to command, control, and monitor the platform. Bayraktar is equipped with a triple redundant flight control system that allows it to perform autonomous taxi takeoff, cruise, landing and parking without the use of external sensors. The primary key component is the flight control system, which runs sensor fusion algorithms with real-time sensor data. The mission control computer system is in charge of mission-specific controls. The aerial platform is directed by a series of redundant rotary and linear servo actuators that are designed to match the aerial platform's dynamics. All of the major airborne avionics equipment, software and hardware are always being improved in order to attain the best possible performance. Triple alternators and balanced, clever lithium-ion battery packs support the electronic power unit that drives the onboard systems. To monitor flight, a ruggedized heated camera unit is installed in the platform's tail portion and all payload and telemetry data is recorded to the airborne data recorder. 
If necessary, the avionics's redundancy architecture allows for autonomous emergency landings on different airfields. Even if global positioning data are lost, sensor fusion algorithms allow navigation and auto-landing. Biker CTO Selchuk Bayrakta demonstrated the updated, upgraded version of TB2, dubbed TB2S. In October 2020, according to Selchuk Bayrakta's Twitter tweet, the TB2S has a protrusion on its torso and a satellite communication antenna on its snout. The basic model of the TB2 used a ground-based antenna to communicate between the aircraft and the control station. The control range is substantially greater than the basic model's 150 to 300 kilometers range. Thanks to communication via the Turksat satellite, the TB2S will be more resistant to adversary communication jamming thanks to satellite communication. The SATCOM-enabled TB2S flew for the first time on December 4, 2020. According to US and European military analysts, Ukraine's drone campaign has contributed to the country's early victories in stopping Russian advance and is revealing unforeseen flaws in the Russian army. More importantly, observers say, the filming about Bayraktar is becoming a more major aspect of Ukraine's information war, giving Russian invaders a cause to fear their adversary and offering a crucial boost to Ukrainian morale amid worries of an impending military assault. Even so, analysts say the drones are unlikely to influence the war's long-term trajectory. Azerbaijan's defense minister, Zakir Hasanov, said in June 2020 that the country had agreed to purchase Bayraktar drones from Turkey. Bayraktar TB2s were employed successfully against Armenian armed forces during the 2020 Nagorno-Karabakh war. Azerbaijan deployed the TB2 to destroy Armenian artillery, infantry positions, and military vehicles such as the BM-30 Smirk MLRS, T-72 tanks, and BMP-1 and BMP-2 infantry fighting vehicles. Azerbaijani drones, most likely TB2s, also destroyed nine Osa and Strela-10 air defense systems. A Turkish-made Bayraktar TB2s was shot down by Armenian army air defenses over Nagorno-Karabakh on October 19, 2020. Another Azerbaijani Bayraktar TB2 was shot down by air defenses in southeastern Nagorno-Karabakh on November 8, 2020, following the discovery that their goods were utilized on Bayraktar TB2 drones. Hampshire-based UK aviation component maker and Air said on January 11, 2021, that it would suspend a delivery and cancel all orders from Baikar Makina after its components were discovered in drones shot down during the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict. The British manufacturer became the latest to halt exporting technology to Turkey. Following that, the Turkish government announced that the components that Andair had boycotted would be produced locally instead. In the Tigray War, Ethiopian forces are said to have used the TB2 against the TPLF. Satellite photographs revealed the TB2 drones at Harar Meda Air Base. While MAML guided munition debris was discovered in Tigray, on the 7th of January 2022, a drone strike in Derbit, Tigray, killed approximately 60 civilians and injured dozens more. The missile used was MAML, which was only used with the Turkish made TB2 drone. According to Galit Dali, a specialist on Turkish and Middle Eastern politics at Chatham House, a London based think tank, the drone sales to Ukraine coincide with Turkey's military interests, which include maintaining the balance of power in the Black Sea region. Despite the fact that Bayraktar drones are made by a private firm, Biker Technologies, the drones are largely regarded as an extension of Turkish foreign policy. Selçuk Bayraktar, the company's chief technical officer, is the son-in-law of Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan. During a webinar in May 2021, Haluk Bayraktar, the company's CEO and Selchuk's brother, stated countries like the United States, China and Israel declined to provide Ukraine armed UAVs. Turkey was the only country willing to sell this technology to Ukraine. The presence of Baiko drones in Syria, Libya and Azerbaijan, all battlegrounds where Russian and Turkish proxies clash, has also been energized by Turkish foreign policy. Drones provide Turkey with a geopolitical advantage, adds Dali. It's one thing to engage in conventional combat in Libya or Syria, but it's quite another to use drones. Turkey's work is made easier by drones. In other countries like Ethiopia, Turkish drone sales are most likely driven by economic rather than political considerations. Unlike the United States, Turkey does not impose political restrictions on drone exports. That concludes today's discussion. We hope you found the video to be informative. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to subscribe and like the channel. We look forward to seeing you in good health. Goodbye.